The most fundamental equation in all of quantum mechanics has to be the Schrodinger equation. And today we're going to tackle that and understand how we can derive the Schrodinger equation from classical mechanics. So to start off, I'm going to write the time independent Schrodinger equation. So we can break this down into saying that the total energy of a system is equal to the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. So I'm going to write that right here. And another way of writing kinetic energy is saying half mv squared. And we're going to keep this potential energy the same. So now let's try to derive this part of the equation right here using this half mv squared. Another way of saying half mv squared is saying p squared over 2m. And so how do we get this? p is the uh, momentum and it's equal to the mass times the velocity. And so p squared is equal to m squared v squared. And so p squared over 2m is the same as half mv squared. Because if we write this out, it'd be m squared v squared over 2m. And if we, uh, you know, deduct the m's, we end up with half, one half, you know, mv squared divided by half. So that's how we get the half mv squared. So let's get rid of this for a second and stick to where we are with the half mv squared over pe and we rewrote that as p squared over 2m so the next part we're going to talk about is the de broglie relationship and the de broglie relationship relates the uh, wavelength uh, of a particle to its momentum so how we can write the wavelength is by using this lambda term and we're going to say that it is the Planck's constant over the momentum. And so de Broglie related the mass of a particle to the wavelength of that particle. And this is going to be super useful. So I'm just going to quickly uh, box this piece right here and this piece. And we're going to take a look at a couple more pieces that's going to help us derive this. So the next equation we're going to need to know is the wave number equation. And uh, we can write that as k equals 2 pi over lambda. It's one more piece down. And another piece that we're going to need is the uh, psi wave function being equal to e to the i k x. Um, there would be an additional term here if, if we were looking at the time dependent, but for now, this is all we need to describe the wave uh, function. So really quickly, let's um, actually take the uh, derivative uh, of this. So to do that, we'd be basically saying that the derivative of psi with respect to x is equal to, we're going to bring that these constants down. So we end up with i k e to the i k x. Okay. And we're going to take the derivative one more time of this function. So moving on here to the next step, d2 psi by dx squared is equal to i k squared uh, by um, e to the i k x. So we know that i squared is negative 1. And then we're left with this k squared. So we can actually just write that as negative k squared e to the i k x. And uh, what is e to the i k x? Well, that right there is psi. So if we rewrite this, we could simply say that it's equal to negative k squared psi, right? So let's clean this up a bit, and I'm going to basically write this right here. And we'll just wrap this in a nice thin rectangle. Now, using these five things that we've, you know, figured out, 
we're going to go from the classical understanding of um, normal mechanics and physics into how we get to this fancy equation here at the top, known as the time-independent Schrodinger equation. We could write this uh, simply as E psi, the total energy of our particle, is equal to the uh, kinetic, uh, which is the P squared over 2M. So we can write P squared over 2M psi plus the potential psi. Okay, so that's what we end up with. So now we need to find values uh, for P squared. So if we manipulate the De Broglie relationship with the wave number, what we can do is if we put this k equals 2 pi over lambda into this lambda equals hp, then we get lambda is equal to 2 pi over k. So with a little bit of jiggling things up here, we can actually say that k is equal to uh, 2 pi over uh, lambda times the momentum. Okay. And we could actually simplify this even further because there's something known as the reduced Planck's constant, which is just h over 2 pi, which is often written as h bar, this little h with this thing on top. This is the reduced Planck's constant. And we can just say that all this is just p over h bar, like that. So, um, you know, just simplifying some terms here, nothing too crazy, but um, this is P, the momentum, over the reduced Planck's constant. Now let's just clean up all of our uh, equations here a little bit. So K is equal to the momentum over H bar. So if we were to take this and square it, that would be k squared is equal to p squared h bar squared. Now, if we merge this into this equation here, what that would look like is d, d to psi over dx squared minus k squared, which um, we can rewrite as minus p squared over h bar squared psi. Okay. So, you know, so all we've really done is replace the k in here into this equation, which we got because of the following information that we've uh, mentioned with the De Broglie relationship and the wavelength. Now let's uh, rewrite this a little bit differently because we're going to actually be using p squared over 2m as our kinetic energy. And we will just call all of this here psi. And now, all we're going to do is substitute this part, p squared psi. So if we just rearrange this a little bit, what we could end up with is negative h bar squared d2 psi by dx is equal to p squared psi. So now all we need to do is substitute this p squared psi into uh, the equation over here so what that would look like is what we end up with is e psi is equal to minus h bar squared over 2m d2 psi by dx plus whatever our potential is, so we could be psi. That's pretty much it. Um, 
So now we have the time independent Schrodinger equation, which next uh, what we'll do is actually solve that. And this is actually in particular to a particle moving in just the x direction. And of course, this is time independent. So we're not taking into consideration how it looks as time changes. 